So as it's nearly spring, I decided to go to the spring of the Thames. We're going to do it with wild camping. We're going to walk all 200 miles, hopefully. Am I suggesting here is uncivilised? Kind of. Hopefully there isn't any irritant. Apparently that can be harmful. It's not exactly Golden Gate. It's all we've got. Oi mate, give us a ride on your bridge. There's actually an escape route from the Amazon factory. No shopping trolleys this yet. Are they fighting or mating those two? Here's a bench, and this is the view. So if you want to follow me up the river, please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, or share with your friends because it helps the channel. Morning. It's crack of not even crack of dawn, it's way before dawn. Look at that, I'm rather exposed here. I don't know how many people come through. I'm just uh, packing up early. It's just was it, after five. No, it was good. Ish. I did keep working every hour or two. It's one of the things that's rather stressful about this tent is that I do prefer the rucksack being inside the tent because not only less pesties and less slugs and things to crawl into it, but also I don't want the rucksack itself to be nicked. You can see in the distance there's the Queen Elizabeth Bridge. That will be upcoming. There's you know, traffic running across it all the time. That's probably you hear what you're hearing. It's sort of hum. Um, that's 24 7 pretty much. That's the campsite cleared. Hopefully, there isn't any irritant. This site at Swanscombe is a site of a cement factory. And according to the owners, that if there's standing water, or say if you uh, piss on it or put your pasta water onto it, as I did last night, apparently that can be uh, harmful. I mean, there is a lot of green grass, but also a lot of dead grass, so I was like, uh. But what's really weird is the zone they're saying, apparently the only bit that's irritating is near the pier, the light, all bit by the river just chemical whatever it is and it's very interesting how it how it just lays just one side of a path and it magically knows not to go the other side of the path it just you know as soon as it goes with what path it suddenly goes oh no i'm not going to go there so i'm calling bs on that one either the whole site has it which is possible which is a bit weird because this place was supposed to be a theme park so obviously universal studios didn't mind doing that that's crap to keep people away from wild camping and going onto the pier and the other parts of the site. I don't go where it says private signs. Just don't. I nearly crumbled on that last night. <laughs> but you know, I ended up by the pylons. And that pylon there is where those people were pissing around, generally being right dicks um, for want of a much stronger word I'm going to head up there if I see them I'm going to tell them what I think of them but in unrepeatable language not cool not cool the only thing really review of here is over there in fact they switch their lights down now there's that park I came through the industrial park you know Andrex Kimberly Clark and all that lot all hail the Andrex Tower and so I was viewable from there so I didn't want to really hang around there's my site you can see the path is here, but as far as I know, no one came through here. People would come through. I did see dog walkers last night. Oh dear. Ooh. That's not my first rat, actually. It's my first dead rat. But what we're going to do today is day hike uh, to Dartford and beyond. As far as I can go, get into civilization. Am I suggesting here is uncivilized? Kind of. Um, well, it's not London proper, really. To get into London proper, it's not really London unless it's actually in the zone, <laughs> zone six. See how far I can go with these with these legs that were wrecked by pissing around last night, and then head home to refuel. We do the day hikes, which I think will be a lot less stressful <laughs> and also a lot less painful on the back. Who else brings you Tilbury at dawn? <laughs> More dead rats. That one hasn't been attacked. Okay. 
either the poison or sight, or this sight is poisonous. One or two. And this is Broadness Harbour. And the locals had to fight to keep this. Uh, and I think the status was in doubt when they were going to turn this place into a theme park. That's a weather station behind. But as you're watering out, I did hear someone motoring out. It dries up. It's only got water at certain times. That would make sense because it was high water was was four a couple of days ago. So yeah, it's usually quite a dry harbour. Literally, I was sitting here, and they stopped over there. It's like you know they kept past me, chatting to their mate on the phone, and I uh, just stopped right there. And you're in the dark. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the hell are you doing? So I just came back to see if I can find where they were camping. Give them a bit of a wake up call, but no, can't see them. It's quite weird being here, because I remember these being, I think these were being built. That last block was being built when I was here years ago. I've taken some photographs of the other area. That's actually gone downhill, which is strange. I was worried that they were going to gentrify Swanscum. And there was you know, news of this theme park being built there. Well, as you saw, that didn't happen. They love to put signs like this on the gated estate. This was here. Another end of the line. Well, you can go through here. Why did they make us walk? all the way there and all the way back again and it could have had a little gate or something and I think it might have used to have one because <laughs> look, you can see the little bollards here and it just, it just stops there and in all the dead end I have to backtrack surprise Asda Good for a toilet, water refill. I have a coffee. Mm. Let's do a Liam Brown shot with a coffee. You know what I mean. Coffee. I don't usually treat myself. Although, 2 90 for a machine coffee, you have to do it all yourself. That's kind of like, that's a bit of a mistake. I'm not sure if Elizabeth was happy about having a road bridge named after her. One of the biggest road bridges. So many lorries go across that. So much freight. It's not exactly Golden Gate, it's all we've got. I don't know if it's my mind's playing tricks on me. I'm so sure there was like a little proxy. Maybe it's coming up with like a little harbour here underneath the bridge. Or somewhere near here. A bit like Broadness, so like a little harbour. Maybe it's coming up, but I'm sure there was. I remember the being surprised that there was stuff underneath here. Or maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else. Amazon gets everywhere. In a few Amazon warehouses. There's actually an escape route from the Amazon factory. And Stalag 17, look at that fence. The tail's wrong, they don't let them escape at all. <laughs> My kingdom for a bin. Looks like this is going to be carried all the way to Woolwich. Yeah, you see all those trucks? The place actually has a pontoon. They could actually ship it through sea freight. Or ships. But no, it's all trucks. It's odd what you remember. That, I don't remember that. Obviously Amazon wasn't there, it's actually a power station. But I remember the smell. When that was this place. So one of several sewage works on the Thames, obviously the treatment of sewage and water treatment is going to become a recurring theme in this series. This actually doesn't smell at the moment, but the golds are liking it. I wanted to talk about some of the people we met along the way. One was a, a bit strange, it was a middle class lady and her friend, I alluded to that one. What made you would do that? <laughs> when I told them what I was doing, they sort of lost interest quite quickly when they realised I was wild camping and we were camping, suggesting I should couch surf 
while in London because of course everyone's got friends in central London. She was trying to show off and she thought I meant Camber. And she said, I've walked the Kent coast, you know. And it's like, so have I. <laughs> oh, it's raining, great. Uh, which way now? Of course it doesn't tell you. I think it's along here, but I might be wrong. Uh, and the beach, a little bit of a beach here. It's beach by Amazon, Surla sewage. Yeah, I really wouldn't go swimming there with the sewage works just over there. And then there was a, a fisherman I was talking to. He asked me what I was doing at Gravesend. You know, I, I was recording a bit about the the light ship. You know, he's like, oh, good on you. Like he was saying, I could, you know, I easily walk seven miles. You know, because I was like, oh, I'd like to get to Dartford, a bit seven miles. No, I was easily, and it was like three o'clock, nearly four. And I was like, no, and I was quite right. I, I struggled to get to Swancombe before dark, so Dartford was a big no. You know, the reason for Dartford was camping before I do the Darrant River Cray bit, which is about three and a half miles, I think, going inland and out again. I mean, really, I'd love to go to get to Woolwich, but with that little foray in and out. Camping opportunities, I think, yeah, definitely, although exposed, I think. And again, more ex-military an ex-fireworks factory on there as well, which blew up. Um, very bare marshes. So unless you're sheltering behind a, one of the old military things, I'm not sure why there's much shelter on it. But no camping today. I think I'm going to head home and it'll be so nice to walk the rest of this to central London without this 10 kilograms worth of pack. That's caused me optimistic, like Galleon's Reach or... Tidal reach, not mud flats, which is what it really probably is. Just making a turn into the Darrant, the Dartford Creek. This is the River Darrant flood barrier. Now that would make a brilliant bridge uh, if they'd opened it up, but you can't get through it. It would be wonderful if that was actually a bridge. This shows you the lack of planning on these things. Oi mate, give us a ride on your bridge. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's uh, part of the Thames Barrier system, at the same time as the, the famous Thames Barrier, it's 81. And the Thames Barrier itself is a little bit later, but yeah, it's part of the whole system. These are the Dartford marshes. But yeah, we're heading for that road in the distance there. So you see those, if you can see those things, that's where we have to head to, I think. Then back up so there, a merry-go-round of dark marshes. I wonder if it's that where the fireworks factory was. It's, I know it's somewhere in the wooded section. I was looking out for these. These are part of the military installations on. Hello? Robins wanting to munch you. There's part of the military installations on the marshes and there as well. But it's amazing how a lot of this has just grown up like this. Much more barren when I was here. I definitely have pictures of these. Yes, you have to go along this lovely road and then go under the bridge, I think. Yeah, I forgot. And I should be using a microphone for this because it's very noisy here. Last time I made that mistake, very same mistake, which is you go under the bridge, that's the Darren Walk. You have to cross the bridge and then, you know, with that lovely road, you rejoin the River Darren to Dartford walk, but from the other side. And then we do a sort of a cray diversion for a bit. Ah, oh, glad to be away from that road. And we turn off into the cray. This is the cray. Saw some people with the busy vests on the other side. I'm paranoid there's closed the path on the other side. I hope not. Now, literally isn't another way through it really so yeah. I found a use for the silly strap as I call that I'm really not totally sure if this strap's any good but it's very good for putting a microphone on <laughs> and if ever you think you look at my videos and go oh he's not a proper hiker he's not done up his X strap it's because I'm filming I have to take off my backpack get the selfie stick out 
put my bag on. There's no point in buckling up just for this and then I would unbuckle it and then rebuckle it. You know, as soon as the camera goes off, be sure that I immediately clunk click and buckle open up, you know. So, hope for that, yeah, that wonderful view. This wonderful view of Dartford marshes. This might be Cray marshes, I suppose, at this point. So far, we have seen this morning the sewage works, the industrial estate, and I didn't show you it because I really didn't want to hang around there and get crapped on by seagulls. That's the dump. A great escape indeed. It's sunny though. It's a beautiful part of the Thames today. Yeah, all that rubbish. It stank as well. And just over there is the recycling centre. This is Dugdale Wharf in Crayford Creek. My Saucony 13s have started squeaking as well as having the problems. Uh, well as having the problems I had before. Uh, they're both squeaking, which is driving me mad. Introducing Sitmat. I found this Sitmat. It's just one of these foam panels. I found it uh, near Queen Elizabeth Bridge. And it's going to become very useful. You've got like thousands of benches, millions of benches, two centimetres into a trail or right by the car park. But somewhere like this, nothing. All the way from uh, the mouth of the Darrant to here, not a single bench. I'm just mainlining popcorn, just throwing it into my mouth. It wasn't until the last South Downs way trip I had to start taking breaks which might sound crazy but I used to just walk and walk and walk until my legs were just falling off I used to be like oh I, no I can't take breaks because what will happen is my feet will hurt just too much it's just too painful I saw a video about this guy who walks 20 miles a day apparently one of his secrets is taking is it 5 minute break every or 5-10 minute break every hour which might see it sound contradictory, but it works. It's really weird. You know, if I have a, a long lunch, a long lunch for hiking, which is not hours, it's like 20 minutes, or if I have uh, you know, a 10 minute break, even though my feet hurt now, in about 10 minutes of walking, I was like, yeah, I know I can feel the difference and I'm a lot faster. It delays that point where my legs go into just complete meltdown. Some people just, well, like me, and just kind of keep going, keep going, and uh, what you find with that is actually it becomes, as the hours go on, you get slower and slower and until you, know, you have to stop fully because, you know, you can't go any more any further. But as this kind of prolongs it, guess what? <laughs> it was about five minutes, ten minutes, five minutes walk from where I was. Also, I can't get the weather today. It's better than what I was told through the weather report, so I'm happy with this. It's sporadic and not, not heavy, so I'm happy with that. Here's a bench, and this is the view. I suppose they might probably prefer that view, but it's not massively better. Mmm, scenic. <laughs> Dartford Creek is rubbish. Literally, there's all these rubbish places here. We're finally clear of it. I think there's a crash car. Is a, a recycling place. But yeah, there's a lot of these recycling and rubbish places around here. 24 miles to London, one of three quarter miles to Aerith, Dartford 4, well, I, maybe, possibly about right. Yeah, ow. <laughs> I'm gonna a poem. Down a wandering path I have travelled where the setting sun lies upon the ground. The tracks are hard and dry, smooth and with the weathers where the mind did move with them that had before me been, trodding down the ground, a track for me to follow, leaving marks for others, a sign for them to follow. Rhyme follow with follow, but otherwise very nice. The Eris Saltings. Apparently there's a fossilized forest here from two thousand years ago. See it low tide, it's not low tide now. Also, it looks like up there there's camp fireplaces, and it looks like a good place you could actually camp. 
obviously depending how many weird Russian men <laughs> go there. And yes, Aerith has its pier as well. It's a bit big, a lot bigger than Gravesend. <laughs> or Wigan. I can't remember if I actually walked this or not. I'm not going to do it today because my legs are killing me. Oh look, shopping trolleys. Ha, ah, the first shopping trolley in the mud and also traffic cones. Oh, another shopping trolley. Aha, a whole school of shopping trolleys. Are they fighting or mating those two? And in Tim's art, let's have a look at the mud gallery. Yes, I didn't refer to my photographs from back then when I took my new photographs, but as you can see, back in the day and now I'm obsessed with the things that end up in the mud and the shapes that are made mostly bicycles motorbikes shopping trolleys and crutches but it's not just the shopping trolleys it's also the piers and the reins of the wharfs and the old signage still remaining along the river. These are all photographs from between Erith to Thamesmead and Woolwich. Cool wildlife superhighway. I'm not sure how many wildlife you have around here apart from down shopping trolleys. The crane is still here. I have to this. Thought it'll be long gone by now. And the remains of the wolf. The wolf's still here, although there's new developments happening behind, so maybe won't let it be here for much longer. These are so annoying. People are commenting on how loud they're squeaking. I really do need to send these back because they're just squeak, 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 both of them now, and it's just really irritating, but the worst thing is people pointing it out, and it's just like, thanks state they're bleeding obvious and your shoes are squeaking or you're tall whoa we've got a live one i'm about six miles from well literally according to the sign i'm not sure i believe that and about three or maybe four from thames mead I mentioned the Great Flood of uh, 1953, and I didn't realise, well, in the back of my head, I kind of knew there was something to do with here, and it was Erith Marshes that had the, what called the Great Breach, that's where it came in, and it went as far inland as Belvedere and Lesnar Abbey and uh, a few other places. And that eventually led to the construction of the Thames Barrier, which we're probably in a different video. Here at Crossness, we have the famous sewage works, which are over there. We have the sludge power station, partly powers the Crossness power works. I don't know if it's still working, but it, it, it burns the sludge. And we also have over there, they're building a new power station powered off waste. There's the one that was already here when I came past the, many years ago, and they're building a new one as well next to it. And this is Crossness Marshes, which is designated a nature reserve. You notice the big fences around it. I don't think, I did look, I don't think you can camp on. Some of it maybe, but a lot of it actually is off limits. It's a good thing I don't have smell of vision. This is Crossness uh, Sewage Works, the biggest in Europe. Biggest. New and old. Those are the Victorian pump houses. The Victorian beam engines. I'd love to go in there. Never have. Because they say it's open like one day a month or a couple of days a year. It's not very open very often. 
and hello to the Ridgeway which it doesn't start here but it goes through here and yes that's one I'm considering in a future video I was wondering what this was I think it's a dead golf course uh, fortunately not accessible but it's one of the things I was considering um, for wild camping more mud flats and there in the distance is the city which we're heading for and this is Thamesmead, or it's kind of... Thamesmead isn't all modern stuff. We'll get to some of it, but it's a massive development. Most famous for being the place that Clockwork Orange was partially filmed in. What have you got against Dagenham? About two, three miles from Thamesmead, even though I'm right, right by this... I don't know, was that a little... Thing park and also they're building a new warehouse over there hence all the noise I thought I'd say thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it even though it's showing the beauty and also the ugliness but also the beauty within the ugliness of the Thames I'll put on screen a video from the Thames Spring series if you want to see more from the journey along the Thames, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.